Now let's take a look at how we can schedule meetings with Zoom on the iPhone. Let's go to my iPhone. First thing we need to do is open up Zoom. Tap on it. Now what we need to do is we need to sign in. If you are not signed in, you cannot schedule a meeting. You can schedule meetings with a free account. So if you do not have an account, all you have to do is just go over to sign up. Create your account and then you'll be able to schedule a meeting. I have an account, so let's go ahead and sign in here. Now I'm using Face ID, so I'm just going to tap on password here. It recognizes my face and now I am in the app. From here what we need to do is we need to go to meet and chat. It should open up to this by default. Now what we do is we go over to schedule. When we tap on schedule we're able to schedule a meeting. When we schedule that meeting we have a number of different options for that meeting. So let's go ahead and schedule this and see all the different options we have. Tap on it. First thing we need to do is we need to name the meeting. So all I have to do is just tap in here, the keyboard pops up, and I can name the topic. So let's just go with Zoom. From here, what we need to do is we need to decide when it starts. Remember, we're scheduling this, so this is not an instant meeting. So now, all I do is just tap on this, and then I set down at the bottom here when it's going to start. So I'm just going to go with Friday here at 7 p.m. I tap on Done. And now it is scheduled for tomorrow at 7 p.m. How long is this meeting? By default, it's going to be set for an hour. Now, the meeting will not automatically end after an hour. You are not setting when the meeting is going to end. All you're doing is just telling the participants what the duration is or what the intended duration is going to be. So if your meeting runs over an hour, that's okay. It's not going to shut down automatically or end automatically. Our next option is for our time zone. We just tap on our time zone here to change it. We can also set if our meeting is going to repeat. Maybe this is going to be a weekly meeting. If it's going to recur or repeat, then what we do is we tap on this. And from here, we can set how often we want it to repeat. So if you wanted it to repeat every week, you would tap on every week. Now, if we just go back, it is not going to apply these changes. What we need to do is we need to tap on done in the upper right hand corner to apply these changes. I'm going to leave it at none. I do not want it to repeat. So now I just tap on back. Our next option is for the calendar. Do we want it to add to our calendar? By default what it's going to do is it's going to add it to the calendar app. If you do not want to add it to your calendar, what you can do is you can tap on this and then set it to none. I'm going to go back again. We also have our meeting ID. Now I've mentioned this a few times in my lessons, but if you're new to this, when you host a meeting, or actually when you even join a meeting, the way that Zoom works is it does it through meeting IDs. This is the address of the meeting. The first thing you need to know when you host a meeting, or even if you join a meeting, you need to know where that meeting is going to be. If you're hosting it, you want to tell people where that meeting is going to be. This is the meeting ID. When you create an account, even a free account, you are given a personal meeting ID. This meeting ID does not change. It will change for paid accounts. You can change it for paid accounts, but for free accounts, you cannot change it. So when you host your meeting, do you want to use your personal meeting ID, the one that doesn't change, or do you want to use a randomly generated meeting ID? One that will change each time you have a meeting. Well, if it's a meeting that you're going to have on a regular basis with people that you know, what you may want to do is just use your personal meeting ID here. In order to do that, you just go over to the right, you tap on the slider, and now it's going to use your personal meeting ID. All you have to do is share this meeting ID once. And then as the meetings continue on week after week, it's going to use the same meeting ID. So the participants do not have to know what that meeting ID is each time there's a new meeting. Now, if this meeting is with people that you do not know that well, or it's a meeting that you do not have on a regular basis, what you may want to do is turn this off. So then you're not giving out your address to strangers, to people that may be in your meeting only one time. If I leave this off, each time I have a meeting, it's just going to randomly generate a new meeting ID. 
Now, being that this is a meeting that I'm having on a regular basis, I'm going to leave it with my personal meeting ID. Our next option is for password. When we host a meeting, they have to know what that address is, what the meeting ID is. We have that up here. The next thing they'll need to know is what the password is. If there is a password, if you do not want to use a password, you can just turn this off. But I would highly recommend leaving it on. You want to keep that meeting secure. You don't want random people just showing up to your meeting. So you want to make sure that you have a password on there. What is a password? That's what our next option is. Here is the password. If I want to change this, I can tap on this and I can change that password. Now it's telling me that any changes I make here are going to be applied to all of my scheduled meetings. Remember, this meeting is going to repeat on a weekly basis. So if I go and change this password here, it's going to apply to all of my scheduled meetings, which is what I want. So now what I can do is I can tap on this and I can go and change the password. We have a few more options here. I'm going to scroll up here. Our next couple options are for video. When I start this meeting, do I want the video to be on for the host, myself, and do I want it to be on for the participants? Usually you will leave these on. Now you can turn them on in the middle of a meeting, so it's not that big of a deal if you turn them off, but generally speaking, you'll just want these on right away. Someone joins the meeting, the video starts. But you can turn them on and off individually for the host and the participant. We also have our audio option. When I tap on this, what I'm able to do is set how the audio is going to work. Again, in most cases, you're going to use device audio only. In fact, I've never used the telephone as an option for my audio. I just always use my iPhone. So I'm going to go back to back here. And then down at the very bottom here, we have enable waiting room. This is going to be on by default. This is one of the new security settings with Zoom. So now someone joins your meeting, the one that you're scheduling here. What they're going to need to know is what the personal meeting ID is, as well as the password. So they know where the meeting is, the address. They know how to get into the house through the password. Now what they're going to do is they're going to be sitting in a waiting room. Once they join that meeting, the host is going to have to let them into the meeting. So how do you let people into your meeting if they're in the waiting room? You'll get an alert. Being that you're the host, you'll see that someone is in your waiting room and you could admit them. You can also go to Participants, the Participants tab at the bottom of your screen when you're hosting a meeting. From there, you'll see everyone that's in your waiting room and you can let them in. If you want to take a closer look at this, take a look at Hosting an Instant Meeting. I demonstrate this in the Hosting an Instant Meeting. If you'd like to see how this works, take a look at my lesson on Hosting Instant Meetings. But basically what's going to happen is once someone joins your meeting, your scheduled meeting, they're going to be sitting in a waiting room and you have to let them in. Now we have advanced options. When I tap on this, what I can set is who can join the meeting. Do I want everyone to join the meeting or do I want to have it for only authenticated users? So what is this? Well, when you turn this on, only people that are members of Zoom are going to be able to join your meeting. So if someone is not a member of Zoom, or they do not have an account with Zoom, they are not going to be able to join your meeting. This could be another security feature if you're concerned about that. If you leave it at everyone, then anyone with that meeting ID, as well as a password, is going to at least be able to get into the meeting. They're not going to be able to get into the meeting room, but they're going to be able to get into the meeting or the outside of the meeting, even if they do not have an account with Zoom. If you want them to have an account with Zoom, you tap on only authenticated users can join, and then the only people that are going to be able to join that meeting are people that have an account with Zoom. I'm going to leave it at everyone here, and I'm going to go back. We can set if we want to automatically record the meeting. So once the meeting starts, it'll record it automatically, and then we have alternative hosts. With alternative hosts, we can have other people as the host of the meeting. You tap on this and select who you want to have as an alternative host. Once you have all these options set, all you have to do is just tap on Done here. It's going to create that meeting. Remember how I had it added to my calendar? This is where I go and add it to my calendar. So now it's going to add it to my calendar on a weekly basis for Friday night at 7 p.m. So let's go ahead and tap on Add here. And now that meeting is scheduled. 
If I want to see my meeting in Zoom, all I have to do is just go down to the Meetings tab here, and I can see that meeting. I can see what the address is or the meeting ID, and when I tap on this, I'm also able to see when it is going to start, as well as what the password is. If I want to start the meeting, this is where I go and start the meeting. And then I can also invite people. If I wanted to edit it, I tap on Edit, and now I can go and edit that meeting. I can change the time, change the password. I'm going to go back over to Info. I'm not going to make any changes to it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel this. Now I'm not actually canceling the meeting. If I wanted to cancel the meeting, what I would do is I would tap on Delete. All I'm doing is just canceling the screen. It's a little misleading, but when I tap on Cancel, it doesn't actually cancel the meeting. We can see it is still here. Remember how I added it to my calendar? Well, let's swipe up from the bottom here and take a look at my calendar. I'm going to swipe over to the right, and now we're going to go over to Calendar. When I tap on this, and I take a look at tomorrow here, you're going to see I have that meeting. When I tap on it, I can see all the details of that meeting. If I were to delete this event, it only deletes it out of my calendar. It doesn't actually delete the meeting itself. It only deletes it out of the calendar. So that's how we schedule a meeting in Zoom on the iPhone. We first have to log in. We do need to have an account. Even a free account will work for scheduling meetings. From there, what we do is we tap on Schedule. You're going to see a number of different options. We can set the topic, when the meeting is, how long the meeting is going to be. Do we want to use our personal meeting ID or our randomly generated meeting ID? Do we want to have our camera on when the meeting starts? Do we want to have the camera on for the participants when the meeting starts? So we have a number of different options. Just go through those options, and once you have it all set, you create that meeting, and then from there, it is scheduled. You can see all of your scheduled meetings in the Zoom app, and then if you've added them to your calendar, you can also see them in your calendar. So that's how you schedule a Zoom meeting on the iPhone.